It's the second time I'm on stage. Um, we have heard yesterday a couple of things about large molecules and how they are kind of appearing in different informatics solution. And one thing I've skipped um, in order to kind of fit into this session that's largely around drawing and defining structures or entities. So my presentation is about BioEddy, that is our answer to the demand of people that needs to draw biomolecules that in some ways you can think of very similar to chemical structures, but then have a few peculiarities that just make a classical chemical sketcher not very applicable to handle these kind of molecules. Again, this is just a very brief overview of the tool that we have. It follows the same design principles as Marvin.js does. It's a web-based application, runs in all browsers. Um, it's largely focused around the ability to reduce the information complexity of large molecules to something that is represented in monomeric units. But then the crucial part of it is that wherever this is necessary or possible, we are able to capture the atom-to-atom -atom connection that sits behind each of these um, building blocks. There is access to a monomer library that sits on the right-hand side that makes it possible to just drag and drop things together. And you have some sort of a built-in, say, click chemistry in order to expand and extend these kind of things. It has native Helm support. It has a number of customizations possible in terms of viewing different levels of detail. Um, one of the things that Marvin.js is not particularly suited for is, for example, the ability to manage the sometimes enormous amount of annotations that sits with a biological entity, because sometimes that's, that's the core information that you have in order to distinguish between two different types of entities, maybe sharing the same sequence and a certain level of decorations on that. I would just want to use this time in order to give you a brief overview about the things that we have done in BioEddy in the last year, since the last UGM. Um, a lot of these things, and this goes along the same lines that we've heard from um, our previous speaker, we're very much interested in listening to the experience that users using our tools have, and then we gather this feedback and transform this into improvements that sit within our applications. And we've done a lot of um, kind of smallish, smallish seeming um, user improvements that just make the life easier for those people that are, use these applications. So we have now a highlight when you're drawing bonds that you can see which of these monomers still have available attachment points, which ones don't. Um, we're having the ability edits to kind of define domains and define annotations for those domains. Think about it again when you do kind of fusion proteins or you're kind of swapping um, protein sequence motifs from one molecule to another. Um, these come with specific um, annotations in order to define what it is, why it is good. Um, these can be now added on this particular level of um, a part of that sequence. There was a really interesting one. Um, we've started creating a canvas that was essentially an infinite canvas. You used it as Google Maps in order to swipe around, having in mind that maybe in some day this will be actually an application used on touch devices. It was interesting to see that users were made really, really happy once they've had a scroll bar. We also have added things that made it easier to directly interact with sequences, um, being able to, again, with a user action, just drag and drop something into the middle of a sequence or to the end of a sequence in order to extend it with a few monomers. Of course, we also have text editing capabilities, but it seemed to be a lot more intuitive for people that are using um, this application. And last but not least, uh, we've also, we're using Marvin.js at any particular point where chemical structure is important. So we have the ability to display the entire chemical structure in BioID. Now, Ian yesterday mentioned something very interesting. He's looking for solutions that enable people to like, combine um, the display of chemical structure as well as the reduced kind of monomeric view in order to capture the essence when you define biosynthesis reactions. So one of the things that's kind of in our pipeline, I believe we'll get there very shortly, is actually the ability to go around and say, I can expand some of these monomers, especially when I'm interested in the custom chemistry that sits behind some of these monomers, and kind of still have a 
really, really clear picture about what's going on. That's one of the items. The second item is going to be that we're also looking into, well, essentially creating empty templates where you say, I can give it a, an icon, that icon tells me I have an antibody. You place this onto the canvas and you can bind something that's now very well specified in terms of its chemistry so that you have a well, simpler depiction of, say, antibody drug conjugates where you don't care much about that's an antibody, fine, it has some information elsewhere. But I'm really caring in the creation of my experiment about, um, okay, what do I bind it with? And this is the key information that is interesting for the kind of chemists that are synthesizing these kind of molecules and for the people that do the corresponding activity studies. And last but not least, we'll also add um, the ability to do multi-selections in order to give people the ability to look at like fragments of very large molecules in a chemical context or in a biological context, something that a lot of people have been asking for as well. That's all from my side. Thank you very much for your attention again.